muddy road or something, and you want a little, put a little shiny puddle uh, in the center of the little puddle or something like that, and the rest of it is drier on the, on the perimeter of the puddle. You can come back later and put a little uh, touch of a gloss medium on there to make standing water, basically. The other thing, if you look really close at this pirate diorama, you'll see uh, a couple of wine bottles. And uh, after I painted the wine bottles with uh, oil paint to do light and shadow, and I let that cure for about a month. <laughs> and uh, then I put, I just stroked on a little bit of this gloss medium. Well, it looks like glass. I did the little, the glass in the uh, lantern with mm -hmm. that one too. It looks like a handmade old thick, uh, ripply glass, you know. A, a little bit of, of uh, silver, a little bit of silver to get that glass effect. Kind of yeah. 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 One thing about since I, before I start doing stuff, uh, something unique. On this, I wanted to build this. This is the pirate's hoard, you know, barrels and boxes and things. But I, I needed to paint all the barrels before I stuck them through my ground cover. Because I could like stick the barrels down there and then spray everything with white primer and uh, but I knew I knew that I couldn't get a brush all the way inside the uh, undersides of these barrels and boxes and things you know and so what I did was I painted all the barrels first I uh, then I glued them to the the, the ground. Then I sprinkled on my dirt, let the glue dry, and then I sprayed the dirt with, uh, with Tester's dull coat. That's a clear lacquer that does not shine. And then I went with my acrylic colors on top of the, to make all of the different shades of brown and gray that I wanted. So. And what the lacquer does is it's like a fixative. It will, uh, it will, um, it'll actually help to seal the all these little grains uh, onto the the surface, um, so that when you brush them with a brush, you're not gonna, you know, knock them off. I just can't deal with muddy brushes anymore. You know? <laughs> The other thing, like um, ground cover, it doesn't have to be natural. Uh, this this is a cavalry officer, and I so I thought, well, let's put him on a uh, stone flagstone uh, or a granite stone uh, courtyard, or maybe it's the the floor of a stable or something like that. And uh, so I made the uh, the. Uh, stones out of uh, magic sculpt and I textured it <coughs> and I made all of the uh, the grout lines you know in between them it's not grout they would put concrete as a as a grout and uh, for paving stone uh, so I made that with um, uh, you know like a strip of basswood I think to make the, the lines in between. And then I textured it, I stippled the magic sculpt with a toothbrush. And I, I took a pointed tool and I made a few uh, wavy lines and then I just stippled it with a toothbrush. And you get this nice uh, stone texture. And I probably added a little bit of, uh, a little bit of fine dirt on top of that to make sure that this, it looked like a, a natural texture. Then to attach the leaves, I took my straw, it's straw, and I took a, uh, a bunch of it, and I put it in, in a little pool of uh, matte medium. So that made sure that every little, uh, every little fiber was uh, saturated with 
the adhesive. And then it's you, I just put it on. I kind of made it like something like oatmeal, and uh, that ensured that um, it was not going to go anywhere. You know? And that that's a great thing. I also did that with, and I do that all the time now to stick leaves on my boots. Uh, because the traditional way is you, you put some uh, you put some glue on the ground and then you place or you sprinkle the leaves on or the grass or something like that. And then you let it dry. And then you try and paint it and it comes off on your brush. <laughs> yeah. This is, I mean, you can you can feel this. This is a hard as as a rock there, where those leaves are. And the other thing you can do when it's wet, you can shape it. You can, with your with your brush, you can make it into a pile of leaves, or you can brush some of it away. You can you can take a your wet brush and pick up a, a single leaf and stick it on uh, strategically if you want. To a leaf to go in a certain spot. It's very quick and easy. <laughs> well, those leaves are just soaked with matte media today, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because you don't see, you don't see the, the adhesive at all. <coughs> no, it's, it's invisible, but but it's, it's mm -hmm. like a rock. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. an yeah. It's solid. You can even if you want to do an ivy covered wall. You could do it like this, mm -hmm. and then while it's wet, while the medium is wet, and your brush is wet, you can just move it all around. You can form it into uh, things that look like climbing vines mm -hmm. and stuff, mm -hmm. and then you mount it like that on your diorama, and you have an ivy-covered wall. I mean, you would paint it green. Yeah. Right. I like to. The last thing I do is I'll do a dark oil paint wash. Uh, that will get into all the, uh, it'll create like a shadow effect. And then if I need to, I can come back and just lightly dry brush on the, the uppermost tips. So then I have uh, leaves that have uh, highlights, medium, and shadow. And like Steve said, if I want, if it's a ball scene, you know, I can go in there and do little touches of orange and yellow and things like that. So that's how I do that. So now I'm going to play. Here's my favorite tool. This is a tester's hobby brush. It costs like a dollar. And they're just indestructible. This, this little one's probably 10 years old. And uh, I mean, I wouldn't paint. recommend painting no, anything no. with it. But it, it's just great with, uh, with water and things. Called water. <laughs> Where do you buy that? Um, you know. Is that filtered or non-filtered? <laughs> Actually, you know, I've read uh, in railroad articles about they. Oh, you must have distilled water. <laughs> you just turn on the cold water. That's. It, you'll never. You'll never. Nobody will ever tell the difference. You know. I have one comment about down. your dirt. Uh, I have a low spot in my center <coughs> on my driveway. Uh -huh. And after a big rainstorm, when it puddles out there and then dries, I get the finest dirt you ever <coughs> Yes. Uh -huh. I have a wonderful DVD by a la uh, railroad uh, builder who lives in uh, Washington State, I think. Mm -hmm. And he drives up to the forest where, and he wants to get a pulverized granite. He only uses pulverized granite. And uh, it looks like dirt, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> but a railroad, you know, you know, is actually meant to be viewed from like arm's length. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, railroaders, they use a lot of pre fresh... Uh, uh, yeah, it's like a, a shredded foam, uh, sponge, shredded foam. 
and they dye it in all these different colors. You know? And that's how they make their tree foliage and stuff like that. It doesn't work with uh, dioramas. Anything larger than HO gauge is the 178 scale, I think. About uh, but anything other, larger, larger scale than that, it, it's not going to read. I, I don't use it at all. It's too bad because <clears throat> there's a whole multitude of products you can buy. Yeah. But I think one time I did something. I wanted it to look like a moss that had grown in between uh, paper uh, stones, you know, a Roman road or something. And it was okay. Um, but it is generally out of scale. So let me show you. I don't, I don't, everybody knows how to put static grass on it. So I'll do a tall grass. Okay, I'll show, yeah, so I'll show you how, how cool this is. There's my tall grass here. 